Welcome, welcome to the Learn APL with Neural Networks series. In this video, I want to help you to get everything well set up so you can start coding and learning APL and learning about neural networks. And so the first thing you need to do is to install Dialog APL in your machine and to also set up a keyword to work with APL and to type APL glyphs. So I will leave a link with the instructions in the description and the reason why I won't specifically walk you through the steps is because it, it changes from operating system to operating system. So you can find the instructions in the description. After you have installed Dialog APL, you may have something like this. This is the Windows interpreter. So if you are using Windows, you probably installed this thing. It may have a different color scheme, but it's, it's basically the same thing. Or you may have installed Rive, which looks similar, it has this purple splash screen and then you can start, I think the first time you open it, it looks like this. You can go ahead and change this to start and then you can start the interpreter. And there you go, it, it's pretty similar to the Windows one. So make sure to have this installed. And then you also need an APL keyboard that is a keyboard that can type all these interesting symbols. Some of these are quite familiar to you, for example, the at sign or the question mark, the exclamation mark. But some of the others are, maybe you never saw them, for example, I don't know, these things that look like arrows, or maybe this symbol over here, or maybe this tilde with the, with the diaresis on top. And in order to type this, of course, you can click them. As you can see, I'm, I'm clicking symbols and they are getting inserted into the, the interpreter. But this is very cumbersome, so you want to have a keyboard that allows you to type things. And after you follow the instructions in the description, in order to check the keyboard is correctly set up, you can hover a symbol in the, the language bar, for example, this Greek letter row, and you can check the tooltip. At the top it should say keyboard and then it should tell you the keyboard shortcuts that works for you. And these keyboard shortcuts can vary from interpreter to interpreter and from operating system to operating system. In my case I installed a special keyboard, you can also find the link in the description, so it's alt Control r so if I press alt Control r I get a row. If you are using Rive the default you can check here is to use a backtick, so it's not alt, it's not control, it's backtick R. So this can, can be quite different, so go ahead and see what works for you. And then I will create this notational shortcut for me. Whenever I introduce a new glyph, I will tell you the shortcut to type it. If I know any, I will tell you a mnemonic to help you memorize why that glyph is in that key. But the beginning of the shortcut, I will call it APL or APL key. So if you are, if you are using right, I would say to type an, a row, press APL R. And what that actually meant was press back tick R. Or if you are using the Windows interpreter, in my case, it would be control alt R. But because I don't want to enumerate all these options every time, I'll just say press the APL key and then something else. So if both these things are, are working fine, and well, if the interpreter opened, it should be working, but you can always try summing the two numbers up. So if these things are working, the final thing I need you to do is to create a link between your interpreter session and a folder in your file system. And the reason we are doing so, and let me open both these things side to side so that we can see what's going on. And the reason is, well, maybe you will be doing some work. As you can see here, I have some things in this folder and I, I coded this a while ago and I went to to have a meal or I went for a stroll and I closed, I 
close my my session and now I want to to get everything up and running and I want to resume my work and for that I, I just have to create a link between these two things and I do that by typing closing bracket create to create the link and then the hash refers to the main namespace in here I will tell you in a second what I mean by the main namespace and then I go ahead and copy this path and paste it here and if I press enter I see that both things were linked and now if I type bracket closing bracket map I can see that the things in here listed in here are the ones in here and so if I were to delete one of these the the, the respective item will also be deleted from here and if I change one item in here it will get changed in the file system as well and this hash over here the root namespace it's more or less similar to for example a top level module in python or the top level package in java so it's just the the, the, the highest level in the hierarchy of where your code could be and lastly the way we will be editing things is by using the closing parenthesis ed as in edit and then you type the name of something for example this test function and as you press enter a window opens and it will have it will be either empty or have whatever you already typed and when you edit it and that's not what i meant to do let me go ahead and undo this why can't I undo this? Okay. If you make a modification, in order to save it, you actually have to fix it. And the way you do that is by pressing escape. So if you press escape, APL fixes the changes. And then it changes the value of the variable here. So the new test function is ready to be used. And you can see as well that in the file system it changed to the new value. So everything is really synchronized. And actually let's go ahead and show you one last thing. Let me map so that I can see everything that is available. As you can see test is here at the end. If I go ahead and delete this file. Wait, I think I misclicked. Okay, so I went ahead and deleted it. Now if I map again, you see that test is no longer here, because it's no longer available. So be sure to set up that link and see you in the next video.